Hey there, folks. Scottsdale Travel Chick Sidekick here to tell you a bit about Andy Warhol and the Andy Warhol Museum in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. First, a little bit about Andy Warhol himself. Andy was an eclectic guy who was most popular in the late 60s and 1970s. He was perhaps the most prolific American artist of his time and was a leader of the 1960s pop art movement. Sales of his art have been some of the most expensive of that period. For example, one piece called Eight Elvises sold for almost $100 million and another from his car crash series sold for almost $105 million. The Andy Warhol Museum commemorates his life and is run jointly by the Carnegie Institute and the Andy Warhol Foundation. It's located just across the river from downtown Pittsburgh on the North Shore. Admission is $20 for adults, $10 for students and children, and hours of operations are 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. with Tuesdays closed. The museum covers Andy's life from childhood to death and covers seven floors and 88,000 square feet. It opened in 1994. Fun fact, the Andy Warhol Museum is the largest museum dedicated to a single artist in all of North America. You'll start your visit to the museum by taking the elevator up to the top floor and working your way back down, covering his early childhood all the way through his death in 1987 and Andy's ongoing legacy. All right, so we're heading up the elevator. What do we right. know about, what do you know about Andy Warhol? I have no knowledge of Andy Warhol's work. I know him. Do you know of anything he's done, any of his works? No, but we're going to find out right now because the door just opened. Campbell soup can, maybe? Really? Yeah. I did not know that. On the top floors of the museum, you'll learn that Andy Warhol was born in Pittsburgh as Andrew Warhola in 1928. He grew up in a working class family in a house without plumbing, and his father was a coal miner. Andrew was more or less a loner, but he was quite creative from an early age, and this became more apparent after his parents gave him a camera at the age of nine. In his teens, Andy began to take free art classes, and after high school, he enrolled at the Carnegie Institute of Technology, which is now Carnegie Mellon University. His major was pictorial design. He graduated in 1949 and promptly moved to New York City to pursue a career as a commercial artist. It was also at this time that he dropped the A at the end of his name and became Andy Warhol. Andy's first job was for Glamour Magazine, which was a big break, and he quickly went on to become one of the most successful commercial artists in the 1950s. He frequently won awards for his unique whimsical style using his own blotted line technique to create many of his drawings. On the middle floors, you'll learn that Warhol debuted the concept of pop art art that's focused on mass-produced commercial goods, his most famous being the Campbell soup cans, Brillo pads, and Coke bottles. These works of everyday consumer products created a major stir in the art world, bringing Warhol and pop art into the national spotlight. After this, Warhol soon ventured into a wide variety of art forms, including performance art, filmmaking, and writing. Here's one in the museum called Silver Clouds. Kind of weird, huh? And here's another. I don't know what it's called. Andy eating a hamburger? He even had a show on MTV called Andy Warhol's 15 Minutes. Fun fact, this is how the famous phrase 15 Minutes of Fame came into existence. Also, things begin to get kind of weird at this point with Warhol Girls, his art studio in New York City called The Factory, and piss art. By the way, you won't see his piss paintings or homoerotica in the museum. You'll have to check those out online. Needless to say, Warhol was doing a lot of things at this time, and he also hung around with a lot of famous people too during this period. Among Warhol's more interesting art of this period were his celebrity portraits in vivid and garish colors. His most famous subjects were Grace Jones, Marilyn Monroe, and Mal Tay Sung, among others. A 
Likely the biggest turning point in Warhol's life happened in 1968 when he survived an assassination attempt. He was never really the same after that. His art became more macabre and he slowly withdrew from fame. However, he still remained influential and in fact in 1979, Warhol founded the New York Academy of Art. Bet you didn't know that. His end finally came in 1987 when he died from complications of gallbladder surgery. But his legacy lives on at the Warhol Museum here in Pittsburgh. All right, babe, we just finished the Andy Warhol Museum. Yes. <clears throat> What'd you think? Seven floors, not all of it is good stuff. Uh, it's interesting, it's $20 a person. May not be for everyone. What did you learn? I learned that he came from a really poor family and he made it really big. His first real big uh, gig was with Glamour Magazine. If you could have any one of his works of art, to put in your house, what would it be? I like the Campbell soup. Really? Well, because it was interesting. It was kind of squashed in Oh, you'd put no, that in your I house? I probably would not put that in my house. Oh. No, I'd have to. There's one that had a lot, like, uh, looked like a flower and mm. had some greens, reds, purples. That's not so bad. I don't know if I would have him paint our portrait. No. What if I wanted to put the naked women pictures in the house? Would that be okay? Oh my gosh, we're done. Well, there you have it. Perhaps not the best museum for the Scottsdale Travel Chick. For that one, check out our other video on the Bicycle Heaven Museum in Pittsburgh. But if you're an Andy Warhol fan or just a fan of the 1960s and 70s art scene, you'll probably enjoy a visit to the Andy Warhol Museum when you come to Pittsburgh. Until next time, see you later.